This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above at the top of the screen. Just a quick reminder here, guys, if you haven't gotten on the monthly newsletter, the Rich List, please get on that. There's always exclusive content in that. I just sent out a second blast of the very first newsletter. For those of you that received it twice, please just know that I'm trying to make sure that anybody that got bounced back or added on in the last week or so has a chance to get that newsletter. So just be patient with us while we get everybody rolled in on that so all right let's go ahead and get to it so pure vpn guys the numbers are brought to you by pure vpn seven day trial for 99 cents in the link in the description below you will find a lot of links in there for a lot of things that will help a lot of people so make sure you take a look at those in the comment section or description box the numbers this morning are <clears throat> excuse me Bitcoin, $11,457.84. Ethereum, $398.26. And XRP is $0.27. Cents. Drilling down on the numbers, 0 0.2739 this morning. The market cap is $12,335,000,000. The 24-hour volume is up 2.2%, and we are at $1.5 billion on the 24-hour volume. The total circulating supply is now sitting at $44,994,000,000. Those are your numbers. So, all right, really exciting news this morning, guys. I wanted to show you this. We have a trailer for the movie Kryptonaires. That's exactly right. And listen, I want to take a second and just tell you that I couldn't be more excited to be working with Dustin Planholt and Mike Jansen. And, uh, you know, I know we've caught a lot of heat from people trying to weaponize their channels against us and these kinds of things. And we move forward anyway, because we are so excited to bring this film to you guys. And I don't mind telling you we're extremely grateful gratitude is what drives us here and this is not this is this this is not about anything other than being grateful to be in a moment where we can be privileged and honored enough to represent the XRP community to tell the story about the entire crypto space and uh, I, I really am excited. And Mike Jansen put out a post yesterday, said making progress on the big show and then tagged everybody here. So excited for everyone who donated and supported us in the making of this film. Let's take a look at this trailer really quickly, guys. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. What are they? And what is this emerging marketplace that has been gaining a foothold for over the last decade? Life becomes so amazing because you realize that all the rules in life can be rewritten. All the systems around us were built by people no smarter than us. Everything that we have, we inherited. And we inherited from people who had significantly less than we do in terms of technology and information and so forth. So there's really no reason our lives should be governed this way and controlled this way. So the primary motivation is saying, how much can we change the system? Some people believe it is the next dot-com era, the new age of the Internet of Value. This is just like the, the Internet in uh, 1980s. So you definitely need to get on the shape right now. The Libra moment, at the very least, really forced people to grapple with the incoming future of financial technology and the fact that uh, there are growing capabilities to create um, different kinds of market infrastructures that allow for new ways to view not just how we move money, but to redefine what money is. And has captivated the financial markets and big thinkers like nothing we have ever witnessed or like never before. Lived a life where I've never been able to turn off my brain. So for me to find an industry that welcomes it, I'm living exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I've had enough careers where they said, you know, go home, Coley, get a life. And uh, this is my life. I am excited for this. So, A chance to create generational wealth beyond our dreams. Join us as we take you through a journey of what was once like the wild, wild west. Turbulent and unpredictable, but now intriguing and credible. Of what is quickly becoming a legitimate marketplace for investors of all kinds, from Wall Street to Main Street. 
there is but one question you have to ask. Who wants to be a Kryptonair? And there you have it. I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more excited. Shout out to Mike Jansen. That is just remarkable work. And shout out to Dustin Planhold. I mean, all of us have really, really given a lot of ourselves and our lives and time to this project. And again, we're extremely grateful for all of you that have been with us from day one on this, regardless of all the noise from all the people out here in the space who try to just create drama. This is going to be an exciting exciting film and is i believe the timing on what is happening with crypto and the occ here domestically in the united states and everything else that's taking place the timing is going to be incredible for the release of this film we will keep you posted as we get closer to that there's still a lot of work to go so let's keep it moving all right, EU wide regulations ahead, new rules for digital assets, crypto assets, and stable coins. The European Commission places cryptocurrency within financial market regulatory frameworks, ensures digital assets are regulated a similar way to traditional assets. Now, this is exciting to me because you guys know how I feel about XRP being a currency. And I feel like widely, if they could, you know, figure out, you know, how all these current all these digital assets could be looked at as currencies i think you just you really just create a situation where they can begin the banks as they the banks can begin to immediately take part in a very very big big way uh if it's considered currency because that's what they're regulated for so keeping an eye on that and that is happening worldwide that is in the eu shout out to xrp crypto wolf dj peter vass and michael val five links and so many others for the information today ripple partner moneygram is among multiple companies that were targeted by Bitcoin extortionists. MoneyGram has fallen victim to a DDoS attack. Other companies that were targeted by cyber criminals are Yes Bank, Venmo, PayPal, and New Zealand Stock Exchange. Now, what I find interesting is a follow up here Ripple is not playing around. They're going on and, you know, the, the scamming and all of these things that have been happening, the impersonating, all of this stuff that we've had to watch. And I have to watch it, too, just like you guys do. And it's horrible. I love knowing that Ripple is not just letting like, well, we we tried to do some take action against YouTube and they refused to do anything. So I guess that's it. No, that's not it. Ripple is taking action here and hired an external cybersecurity and digital threat intelligence vendor to help with reporting and takedown efforts in response to the numerous XRP giveaway scams and impersonations. Kudos to Ripple for staying the course. I absolutely love that they're not taking no for an answer. In just six days... Michael Val Five Links reports 5,400 plus accounts worth two or with 295 million XRP set up to claim Spark Token. Wow! Now that's getting it done. Now I want to say full disclosure. I do want to talk about this for a second here. Is that I have not uh, claimed Spark Token yet. I do intend to. I would just like to find out just a little bit more information, and I'm working hard to do that. And I just want to comment on this really quickly. It's not because I'm skeptical. I believe this is going to be very big. I believe that this is going to be a big opportunity for the Internet of Value, not just XRP holders. You know, it is the intention of Flare Network to build a two-way bridge between the Ethereum and the XRP ledger. This sounds analogous to me, and I said this yesterday in Friday's afternoon show with Cryptopolis, co-host from Friday. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But I believe what we're seeing is the is the bridging of two major networks and protocols of the Internet of Value with the Flare Network. Now, we already understand that the ILP had uh, created the interoperability between the ETH network and the XRP ledger, but here is a further uh, uh, progress being made with the Flare Network being a two-way bridge between the Ethereum network and the XRP ledger as well. To me, when I look at the early days of the Internet, I do. I see this very analogous as like, you know, when you have email and now you can do file transfer and now you can build websites. 
you know, the the growth of it is like now you have the AOL network of the early days of the Internet and the Netscape or Net Zero, you know, and, and, and that individual network have now grown to where they can communicate, they'll be able to communicate, cross communicate with each other. To me, that is a remarkable opportunity for the growth of the entire Internet of value. So we're going to keep an eye on that. I just want to find out some more questions. And I know I've been getting a lot of questions from people out in the audience that really are asking a lot of the same things that I'm asking. And we will stay with it. And we're going to work very hard to get an opportunity to hopefully speak to someone from Spark. And I think that will be an amazing opportunity if we get to sit down with them. So very much looking forward to that. Okay, so moving forward, uh, Eswar Prasad, a professor at Cornell University, believes that even though China's digital yuan will enhance Remimbi's role as an international payment currency, it will hardly put a dent in the U.S. dollar status as the dominant currency. Now, that's a bit of good news in a dark time. I mean, let me just say this. I mean, the IMF just held a webinar last week about making external adjustments to the exchange rate peg of dominant currencies like the U.S. dollar. What does that mean? That means revaluing or debasing the dollar against every other currency out here in the world. Now, you know, to hear this view that we know that China's certainly trying to push to create a role for more dominance when it comes to challenging the global reserve status of the U.S. dollar. We know that this is in the face of the United States has printed over $7 trillion during this pandemic. And that is a real situation because now we know that, you know, it is professed by the Fed now, Jerome Powell, is now saying they're shooting for a target of inflation of over 2%, probably north of 3 And the reality is, is that is because of all the money that's been printed. Now they're just coming out and acting like this is a target we wanted to hit anyway. Uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. And uh, all I can say is, is that, you know, the dollar has got enough hurdles in front of it at this point. It doesn't need any more, right? So we're going to keep a close eye on this too. All right, let's keep it moving. So this is probably one of the most exciting comments I've ever heard from Brad Garlinghouse right here. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says the company has more demand for its XRP cross-border payments product than it can currently facilitate. Hello. Is this on? Are you hearing this? For the first time that I'm aware of, Brad Garlinghouse says the company has more demand for XRP cross-border payments product than it can currently facilitate, meaning the price is too low. Yup. If the price was higher, they'd be more liquid and they would be able to service more demand for the XRP cross-border payments product. Come on in. Oh, that's the kind of problem I like to hear about. Yeah. Because what that means is, is that the utility's there, but the liquidity's not at this point. Right? So utility plus liquidity equals value over time. This is where we're at. This, to me, is a beautiful moment, and it sets up an opportunity for very good things to happen, in my mind. And you couple that with the idea that we still don't have a true classification or a designation of what XRP really is, which I believe is a currency. I mean, you could be setting up a day for fireworks here. So uh, we will definitely keep an eye on this situation because, uh, you know, I certainly believe that there are dark liquidity pools that have not been really tapped into. I think they're already there and available. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm speculating. Uh, don't send a hate email. But, you know, all I can tell you is, is that this is exciting for me to uh, hear him make that admission because I believe that they could definitely hook up to things like, oh, I don't know, the SBI FX desk and use liquidity from the FX desk in the at SBI and other FX desks around the world and use those uh, Forex liquidity pools to provide the liquidity they need to facilitate the demand, facilitate the demand. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good news. Go keep an eye on that, too. Now, this was a, a, a post 
from Alex J. And shout out to Alex J. here. He puts a very important 23 second clip here that was from a conversation from Jeremy Allaire's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I think the money movement is what it's called and shout out to Jeremy Allaire. It is a great channel and he has some amazing people on there and killer conversation. So I hope to speak to Jeremy Allaire at some point. He really is a smart guy. So here we go. Um, this is, let me back this up here so we can get this from the beginning. This is a discussion <clears throat> about the USDC coin that was worked on when Brian Brooks was still the chief legal officer at Coinbase, and he worked in tandem with Jeremy Allaire, excuse me, Jeremy Allaire and Circle on this project. Listen to this little quick exchange here. The 70 days to 10. So that's where it all started, was realizing that as important as finance is, we had really been rooted in a lot of practices that were somewhere between 30 and 100 years old, and tech may help. You know that you and I worked together at Coinbase. Uh, when I was at Coinbase, you were at Circle. And we put together one of the most important stablecoin projects in the world. And, you know, that's just another version of the same thing. Put together one of the most important projects, stablecoin projects in the world. Huh. And now that Brian Brooks is at the OCC, you know, you have to wonder, does the, does the USDC become the Fed coin? I don't, you know, who knows? Does it become the digital dollar? I don't know. I just know that Brian Brooks, now at the head of the OCC, feels like it's one of the most important projects <laughs> for stablecoins ever created or worked on. We're going to keep a very close eye on that. So, okay, keep it moving here. Now, this is interesting because this came from CR Equity Pool. Guys, if you're not following CR, I would. CR is really, really putting out great stuff all the time. Great insight. Wow, tech stocks are now the inflation play. What a great way to say it. And it's absolutely true. I had this discussion yesterday with uh, Cryptopolis on the show, and we are seeing areas. Look, metals has always been a great hedge when the economy or the dollar uh, starts to lose its its luster, right? And we know that we're in trying times, right? So metals are an obvious place for hedge, and that's never not been the situation but what we're seeing here also as an extension of this is that the fintech companies the tech stocks are doing well because everybody that is a seasoned investor understands that innovation in tech really is crisis times of crisis becomes a driver for innovation and long-term season investors understand this. And that's really what we're seeing here. So when you see the investment into tech and fintech and, and things like that into this crypto space, the picks and shovels behind the actual tech that we're seeing in and all of us are investing in, this is what you're seeing. And that it becomes a hedge in itself as well. So it's pretty remarkable to, to see that. And what a great post. I just wanted to share that. Shout out to CR for that. That was really really strong insight on his part. And you could see evidence of this from link to right here. And I want to talk about this for a second, because this is an example of how uphold has gone up from just June through July from 30 cents now to 55 cents. Now this is private equity. So this is private investing made simple. That's their uh, motto, but, but this is a private equity company and you do have to be an accredited investor. And I wanted to just give a shout out to, uh, I think it's Luke Lalande nine, who is frustrated. And he says, has the accredited investor wall been changed? It's really not fair that I have enough cash to buy, but if you don't have a million cash or you don't make $200,000 a year and I'm paraphrasing but those are the requirements you can't really uh you can't buy and it cancels out a lot of investors i agree with him and this is the sec guidelines not linked to his guidelines right but what i wanted to remind luke and everybody else out there don't get discouraged because it is discouraging, but don't get discouraged because i don't think the landscape is going to stay this way for very long one, I mean, you know, we're seeing constant adjustments and platforms come out to where you can buy fractional stocks, 24 hours, 365, right? Things are changing rapidly. And I think those guidelines are going to continue to change along with it when it comes to private equity and being an accredited investor. The other thing I'll say is, is that, look, I'm the eternal optimist in this market and I'm not a financial advisor, but... I personally believe that not too terribly long or in the distant future, 
all of us will probably be accredited investor qualified. And that's because of our ability to be in this space early and endure all the down market and all the FUD and all the things we've been through. And I think at some point we're going to find out that not too terribly long from now, we qualify to be an accredited investor. And I think you will too. So I would just remind everybody, you know, just as frustrating as it may feel today that you want to get in on something that early. And I get it. I totally get it. But at the same time, just remember this too is going to change because I think we're going to be the beneficiaries of a really great fast growing market not too terribly long from now in the crypto space all right guys that's going to do it for me uh hit the like and subscribe leave a comment below make sure you check out the links you never know there's a lot of stuff i've got in the in the description box in the comment section that can help you guys out if you need it if you don't you don't but it's there if you do so make sure you take a look at it and thank you again to everybody who has been supportive and donated to the film Kryptonaires. We are very excited. We still have a road to go. We're not done yet, right? And there's still a process to be done, but I promise you, you are going to see a great film, and we are going to let you know as soon as we know when it's done. Until then, thank you to Dustin Planhold and Mike Jansen and everybody who's been a part of Kryptonaires, and including all of you out there. We'll catch you on the next one. Hit the like and subscribe, and share with somebody you know. See you soon.